Hello, Awaken Intuitives. Natalie here. I am back to do a Mercury retrograde on Cancers. Hello, Cancers, or anybody else. Um, you may have Cancer in your chart somewhere, uh, a Cancer moon, a Cancer rising. Um, if you don't know any of that, that's totally okay. And if you're here for your Cancer sun, that's perfect. That's what we're gonna do. And so I'm just cleansing my chakras a little bit, cleansing the energy with my sage, and I'm gonna let that go and light my sweet grass. It doesn't stay lit, but at least we get a little bit of that smoke and uh, cleansing going. Oh yeah, so sweet. <laughs> I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to any new Awaken Intuitives. Um, you're here for a reason. Um, please like, um, subscribe, and comment. Um, it seems like this these messages aren't getting out as much, or uh, it's very slow. And I know Mercury retrograde affects with technology, so maybe that's why, and that's fine. But I would love for more like-minded awaken intuitives to join the tribe and build our connections and so yeah i just want to share and have you share with me we can always learn from each other and so i'm here now and let's start off with cancers mercury is um the ruling planet of the third house of communication transportation and journeys it is also technology and it rules in Virgo and Gemini. Um, Mercury retrograde will be in Gemini for a little while, and then it will go transition into Taurus, and it's more comfortable in Gemini. Um, but if you wanna know more about Mercury retrograde, the meanings, uh, the houses, um, the signs that it's in, um, and anything else, I do have an intro video um, and I will list that uh, link to the video in the description below. So if you want to go back and watch it for more information on Mercury Retrograde. So, and um, yeah, let's start off. I am going to do a prayer and then my singing bowl. And then we'll re be we will begin. Um, all this information is for entertainment purposes only. See Mercury Retrograde with the communication. Anyway, <laughs> so let's begin, okay? Divine protectors and ancestors of the light. I come to you and I come to you with others that join me. And I know this is timeless. So whenever they join, I know this is more powerful prayer. I come to you and I want to thank you for our connections. Thank you for us being able to come together and build our connections, bring clarity and knowledge and unconditional love and good energy, positive energy together. Thank you for the protection and the guidance and the abundance. I ask you uh, for protection, guidance, and safety for me and my family and everybody who is watching all of our inner and outer lives against anything negative, evil, or unholy in any way, shape, or form. And I ask that you'll cut and detach any cords, ties, or attachments, or influences that are negative, evil, or unholy in any way, shape, or form. And I do ask and petition that you will send these right back to its source immediately. I ask that you'll guide me through the cards, guide me through the zodiac signs, guide me through uh, the questions that we have um, I ask that you'll please bring uh, clarity and um, help me and us be able to understand the answers that you give us through these cards, uh, through our abilities and intuition, please. I ask that you'll please enhance our tools, abilities, and intuition when we need them uh, for knowledge and clarity and growth as well. I ask Archangel Michael, Archangel Raphael, Archangel Japhael, Archangel Chamuel, Archangel Ariel um, to guide us, protect us, give us the knowledge, the teachings, the abilities and tools, the joys and happiness um, and wisdom. 
and love, unconditional love, empathy, and sympathy. I thank you so very much for absolutely everything, um, all the abundance and the joy and the happiness and the unconditional love and the energetic connections we are able to build. And again, thank you so very much. I ask for clarity. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if I can put that right over there. And then we'll do the singing. Well, I will ding it twice so you know. Um, be aware if you have earbuds in or your volume's way high. So I will ding it now. Three, two, one. get the right frequency we need higher vibrations okay so now okay cancer I am going to light the sage again see if we can get it going for a little bit longer and we will first pull a blessing card from my Archangel Michael cards I do believe they're called angel wisdom cards let's see okay and we will pull blessing and then we will begin in each house and i'll tell you a little bit more about that here in just a minute what blessing do you have for cancer sons please i have a cancer fiance and a double cancer boy <laughs> all right what blessing do you have for our cancers Okay, we got two that flipped over. What do you have, Cancer? We have curiosity and honesty. So the curiosity says, see life through the curious eyes of a child and you will discover a never ending source of happiness and excitement. Sorry, I'm a little uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> curiosity keeps you alive, interested and interesting. The angels are inviting you to be curious about yourself. Start exploring who you are and you will grow personally and spiritually. Be interested in people and you will discover an eternal source of fascination. Be curious about the wonderful universe in which you live, about the angels themselves and their role in the divine plan. The radiance of your delight in life will illuminate you. And the affirmation says, I explore the wonder of life. And I'll show you that. Oh, look, I've got the <laughs> little stars on the card, too. <laughs> Hopefully that won't interfere too much, okay? All right, so now honesty. Angel wisdom reminds you that your every thought, word, emotion, and action is reflected in your aura. When you are honest, your aura is crystal clear. Everyone knows where they are with you and feels totally safe. The angel suggests that you look within and purify any murky thoughts and feelings. When you are totally honest with yourself, you behave with integrity and dare to be open, for there is nothing to hide. People respect and trust you. As you radiate a resonance of honesty, people respond to you with openness and honesty in their turn. Affirmation says, I am honest in thought, word, and deed. Sorry about the glare. All right. Well, those are good. Okay, so Cancer, we are going to uh, start with the first house of Aries. This is your self-image, personality, and what you project to others. And so let's find out how this Mercury retrograde may affect your first house knock out the previous energy. Okay, for Cancer Suns, how will this Mercury retrograde possibly affect their first house of personality, uh, what you project to others, 
and we've got the Five of Cups, Mars and Scorpio. Five of Cups. This is like a regret feeling or possibly a draining feeling. So what you project to others, your personality, um, you may feel drained um, or almost regretful, but I believe this is more of a draining feeling. And we all try to, at times, please others. And so this may be what may be uh, draining with this Mercury retrograde. So um, let's find out what you can do about this. So we're going to pull an Oracle card. <clears throat> what can cancers do about this draining feeling with this Mercury retrograde, um, with their personality, what they project to others, and self-image, please. What can they do? What can Cancer do, please? What advice do you have when they start feeling drained? Okay. Ooh, we've got Emerald Tablet Activation, Cosmic Ordering, Divine Alchemy, maybe Seek the Divine, and Conscious Manifesting. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Wow. And I'm going to read that for you out of the book. Emerald Tablet Activation. And green is your heart chakra. So maybe, um, maybe you could uh, cleanse or charge, clear the heart chakra, open the heart chakra. Okay. All right. So let's read this for you. Cosmic ordering, divine alchemy, conscious manifesting. The Emerald Tablet is one of the most celebrated of the Hermetic texts, a series of sacred Egyptian Greek texts from the second century or earlier. They form the basis of Hermeticism, a spiritual tradition that brings together science and spirituality through investigations into the cosmos, mind, and nature. Maybe you get out in nature. Uh, most of the texts are a series of dialogues between a teacher and a student and are based on the concept of alchemy. Or maybe you can get a green crystal. Um, there's Malachi, Aventurine, and um, uh, carry it with you. The art of turning lead into gold or something that is le leaden and heavy into a golden opportunity. The emerald tablet is said to have carved on a bright green stone that was transported to Egypt around the fall of Atlantis and stored in the halls of Amenti under the Great Pyramid. Although this legend is widespread, the origin of the text is shrouded in mystery. We do know that it we do know that it is made up of 14 page passages, sorry guys, which first appeared in a book written sometime between the 6th and 8th centuries and has been highly influential. Its most famous statement is as above so below meaning that what is in the high heavens is reflected upon the earth. The author signs off as Hermes Trismegistus, which is another name for Thoth, who is featured in this deck and is thought to have been the priest king of Atlantis. The idea is that he knew of the approaching end of that civilization and hid the emerald tablet and many other teachings in order to preserve them for spiritual aspirations in the future. Well, that is very interesting. Maybe you could be connected to Atlantis in the past life. So that's very interesting. So with your personality, your uh, public image, what you project to others, um, you may start feeling drained uh, with this. And so maybe open up your heart chakra, carry green crystal stones, get out in nature, surround yourself with green, wear green. Um, um, anything green. So maybe uh, just open up your heart chakra. Don't close it off during this Mercury retrograde. 
Okay, now let's move on to the second house. And this is Taurus. This is money, possessions, material things. So let's find out how this Mercury retrograde will possibly affect your second house. How will this Mercury retrograde possibly affect Cancer's second house of money, possessions, material things? How will this Mercury retrograde possibly affect Cancer's second house of money, material things, and possessions? Oh, we have justice. This is a Libra energy. And this is balance. It can be karma trying to balance. So this may feel out of balance during the Mercury retrograde. Uh, the money, possessions, and material things. And she's got a full moon behind her. So I know we have a full moon lunar eclipse coming up. And I will be doing a video on that, a reading for all of us, okay? Okay, so now, well, let's see what you can do about that. What can Cancer, wow, do about this feeling out of balance? with their money, possessions, and material things, please. <laughs> what can Cancers do, please? Can I get one card? Wow, that's interesting, we got two. <clears throat> okay, what can you do about this feeling out of balance with money, possessions, and material things? Ooh, you have snake, creation, Number 43, that adds up to a seven, which is relationships, marriage, romantic partners. Creation. Interesting. And you have the wolf. Authenticity. And number 17, that adds up to an eight. And this is changes. Uh, eight is endings and beginnings. Completion. Restarts. So, let's read the snake. Creation. Maybe start trying to manifest. Um, let's read that for you. And it's actually a heart. And we were just talking about the heart chakra. And the, the snake's out in nature. It's part of nature, the tree. Okay, creation, it is time to shed your skin and try something new. Creation is your birthright. You must understand that to remain stagnant means it's a trophy. So do not fear your own creative flow. If you have a physical ailment, healing will occur. You are capable of big transformation. If you haven't begun, begin. So let's find out what the magic is of the snake. Hey, it would be possible to write a very thick book simply on snake magic alone. Such is its variety and power for our purposes here. Use snake magic for two main intentions. First, for creation and second, for protection. Snake energy is also unmatched in its ability to stimulate the flow of creative forces and enable those ideas and concepts to be successfully transformed into reality. Sorry, I'm moving. If you're stuck for ideas, lack in the flow to get things happening, or literally lack fertility in any area, call upon the snake. As for protection, in so many cultures, snakes are the protectors of the truth. And that's funny because Libra is truth, justice, and all of that is good. If you are worried about being robbed, interesting, with your money, possessions, finances, material things, if you feel if you are worried about being robbed, about others stepping over your boundaries, or you need an energy to keep you safe, coiling snake magic is a perfect one to invoke. Wow. Wow. Okay, now let's read the wolf. And it says authenticity. Maybe um, try to stay authentic. Uh, authentic. <laughs> to, for you. To you. And to others. If you um, need space from others during this Mercury retrograde, 
um, get your space, okay? And see the frozen ice. So if you need to freeze on some things, okay? And you shouldn't buy, uh, purchase very expensive things during Mercury retrograde, um, uh, sign contracts and stuff like that. So maybe freeze for a moment while this Mercury retrograde is happening. So authenticity. Discover who you really are by revealing your authenticity. This is always the best way. We all resonate at frequency. So if you are pretending to be someone you are not, you will keep attracting people with whom you do not re resonate. It is necessary to negotiate a position with others sometimes. Ooh, negotiation, okay. And there should be no anxiety about differences in opinion. I know I felt that before. Let's read the magic of the wolf. <clears throat> okay. Call upon the wolf when you wish to be all you can be in the fullness of your authenticity. While you do not have to be alone, being confident to live your life on your own terms very much embodies the energy of wolves. Wolf energy is also highly protective and you can call upon in it workings where you may feel fearful or wish for a protective ally. Interesting, guys. Okay, Cancer. Authentic. Freeze a little bit. Uh, transformation. Ask for protection um, during this feeling unbalanced with the money, possessions, and material things. Okay, so let's move on to the third house, Gemini. And this is uh, the communication, transportation, journeys, technology. Um, but we'll focus this on communication, transportation, and journeys. So let's do this one. Okay, for Cancer. How will this Mercury retrograde possibly affect their third house of communication, transportation, and journeys, please? How will this Mercury retrograde possibly affect Cancer's third house? All right. You've got the tower. Okay. So the tower is crumbling of a foundation. Um, things will never be the same. Uh, serious changes. And during Mercury retrogrades, there's always growth. So it's like pushing us to grow and change in a better way. And so this is with your communication, transportation, and journeys. So if there are faulty foundations with communication, transportation, or journeys, this will crumble during this Mercury retrograde. And it's always about growth. So, and there's butterflies on this card. That's transformation. Okay. So now let's find out what you can do about this. Let's do star seed. All right. For cancer, what can they do about this? Crumbling of faulty foundations. Um... Major transformation and changes with communication, transportation, and journeys. What can they do during this Mercury retrograde? When this happens, during when this is happening, while this is happening, what can Cancer do, please? Okay. Oh, we've got the Seas of Mintaka. Seeing potential. Okay. So look at it in a positive way for growth. And then bringing unconscious to light. So anything you may have buried under the rug, um, swept away for a while, um, bring it to light or it's going to be brought to light during this Mercury retrograde. And so let's read the Seas of Mintaka. Oh, I just had it. <laughs> okay. Seas of Mintaka. Seeing potential bringing unconscious to light it says mintaka is thought to have a water have been a water-based planet and containing the most crystal clear waters you could ever imagine and if you need to um feel more flowy with communication transportation and journeys maybe drink more water especially the throat chakra um showers baths um let's see 
so clear that you could see for miles and miles underwater. The Seas of Antaka card represents this crystalline clarity of potential and possibility. It's about the ability and choice to see the potential in all people and situations. This could be one of your natural traits, or it could be a sign that what you're currently doing has great potential. Mentalkins are thought to have been a galactic race who saw the light in everything and everyone. You may have received this card as confirmation that a situation or project has extreme potential and will reach fruition. If it appears in a spread, it's a very positive sign that things are working out for the highest potential of all involved. It's a very uplifting light field card that brings great harmony, contentment, and positive outcomes. According to Carl Jung, that which we do not bring to conscious appears in our life as fate. When water appears in dreams and art, it often represents the unconscious mind. Pulling this card also means you may be called to bring to light any unconscious patterns of which you are unaware, like not speaking up, possibly, um, to look at them and see them clearly and consciously so they don't appear in your life as fate. What unconscious patterns or behaviors are ready to be brought to the light of day? The Starseed Soul Inquiry says, how can you see the potential in a situation you're facing? What unconscious patterns are you being called to bring to light? Oh my goodness, okay. Speak up more, um, but during this Mercury retrograde, it, it can affect the communication. It can have people um, misunderstand you. And so maybe try to be just m maybe a little more careful with how you say things um, the words you use. Okay, so let's move on to the fourth house, Cancer. This is structure, stability, home, family. So let's see. Let's do this one. For Cancer, how may this Mercury retrograde possibly affect their fourth house, um, the home, family, structure, and stability? How will this Mercury retrograde possibly affect Cancer's fourth house of home, family, structure, and stability? Okay, that one doesn't want to go in the deck. We've got Ace of Wands taking action. Uh, maybe bringing um, a new action or um, giving you an action to take. And she's got the paintbrush with your home and family structure and stability. So there may be some kind of action to take um, within your home, family structure and stability for a new action to paint the new picture. So let's see what you can do about this. Okay, so what can Cancers do about this new action um, to paint the new picture within their home, family, structure, and stability? It can be a new passion. What can Cancers do within their home, family, structure, and stability about this new action to take? Ooh, you got a couple. You got three. Interesting. You've got storm fields. Number nine. Nine is a wish heard to the universe. There's a pathway and the home is being tore up by this tornado. Maybe faulty foundations. There needs to be changes. That is very interesting. Oh, we've got dragon's lair. Number 19. That adds up to a 10. So completion, fulfillment, and wide open. 42, that adds up to a six, that can be health, wellness, boundaries, um, daily routines. Okay, so with this Ace of Wands, this is that new paintbrush, that beginning to paint a new picture, and then you've got the storm fields with this home. So let's read that. Um, it could be within the home family structure stability that this tornado may be cleaning up. Um, 
or tearing down faulty foundations, bringing in changes, building a new foundation. So this may be this action. Well, I'm sure this is the action to take. So let's read the storm fields. This too shall pass. An uncomfortable chaos is surrounding you. Things that you've left unattended may be the cause of some conflict. Pent up energy needs release, just as a storm in nature must break. For these events occur when electricity between opposing forces stirs things up and create, creates temporary disorder. Not all storms are destructive, rather they serve nature by bringing rain to the ground and wind to the trees, enabling seeds to be widely distributed and continuous growth to be ensured. Just remember that whatever is being stirred up inside you or between you and another will benefit you later. The sun will shine again and new growth will be observed. Don't be afraid to shake things up a little. All right, now Dragon's Lair, number 19. And it's like, yeah, maybe this is a, uh, instead of this little wooden cabin house, maybe it's going to be building, building um, this new layer, um, a more protective home, um, more sturdy. And see the dragon protecting. So you are always protected and divinely directed. That's what it says. Oh my goodness. You have a remarkable internal warning system that lets you know when things are out of alignment. You're about to enter dangerous territory, so tread carefully and be aware of your surroundings. That's probably that storm fields with that tornado. The path you're on now is one that will challenge you to the core. That said, peril is also exciting and exhilarating. Like the danger you feel before you enter a new relationship, knowing that you'll be changed forever. And this is within the home, family, structure, stability. A life lived fully isn't lived only in safety. A new experience is calling to you, one that will test your courage. The choice is yours, but there is a greater value and risk taking than remaining unchallenged. New territories are waiting to be discovered. Amazing. Now this wide open. Number 42. So be wide open to the divine protection and guidance and new changes and challenges and growth. That's amazing. It says you are free to express your uniqueness to the world and share in all the bounty of life's endless possibilities. All manner of opportunities are presented to you at this time. The wide open card is a signal that you're able to truly manifest your dreams and that your goals are in sight. Don't remain small and contracted. Instead, expand your horizons beyond what you believe to be your limitations. You have a unique voice that needs to be expressed in the world. The universe is supportive of new ideas and approaches at this time. So speak up and speak out. This card is the sign of the maverick who freely roams the wide open space of possibility. Allow for a greater vision to replace old ideas as you dream a grander dream. Wow, that went so well together. That was perfect. Okay. Now, Cancer, let's move on to the fifth house of leo and this is love pleasure amusement and creativity okay for cancers how will this mercury retrograde possibly affect their fifth house of love pleasure creativity and amusement How will this Mercury retrograde possibly affect Cancer's love, pleasure, amusement, and creativity? Almost there? <laughs> Maybe. How will this Mercury retrograde possibly affect? Cancers, okay, those two do not want to go in. So we will take them. <clears throat> okay, what do we have? Oh, we've got 10 of emotions, which is 10 of cups. This is your most happy, abundant, emotional life. 
and we've got seven of voices which is seven of swords this is strategic and it can be sneaky um so with love pleasure amusement and creativity during this mercury retrograde this may make you feel um with your most abundant emotional life you may feel a little bit needing to be strategic or maybe sneaky or um treading carefully um don't want to be seen so here's the 10 of emotions and the seven of voices fox in the hen house okay so what can you do about this what can you do about this What can Cancer do about this with this um, this Fox energy with their most abundant emotional happiness um, feelings um, needing to be careful and not seen with their emotions? What can they do about this with their love, amusement, creativity, and pleasure? We've got balanced forces. You need to balance. Oh, number 19. We had a 19 before that. Um, that's up to a 10. This is endings and beginnings, a restart of uh, fulfillment and completion. So let's read that for you. You need to be balanced. You need to have balance um, to deal with this. Okay, so yes, this may be a little tricky. This fox is a little tricky. All right, so yin and yang, productive flow, masculine and feminine energy, the balance of duality, patriarchal paradigm, being rebalanced, equality, balance and perspective. The Lemurian people are said to have been a dro androgen androgynous, meaning they were not a specific gender. Sorry, I moved, guys as they were only partially formed in the physical realm. They did not inhabit a paradigm of duality. They were a perfect balance of what became masculine and feminine energy as it densified in physical form. Okay, so Cancer, whether you are uh, male, female, whatever, maybe try to balance masculinity and femininity as best as you can. We all have this these parts we all hold a mix of masculine and feminine energies. That's funny how it says that now, huh? Within us, masculine energy is more about focus and a forward direction, while feminine energy is more holistic and peripheral. Masculine energy is that of logistics and actioning desires into being, and it has more of a controlled and rigid vibration. Feminine energy is freer, flowing, nurturing, creative, and receptive, both sides are to be celebrated, but in our efforts to rebalance, inequality and prejudice are, can occur. In the current paradigm, masculine and feminine, feminine energies are imbalanced as our global culture is largely patriarchal and strongly influenced by masculine energy. Efforts to revitalize the feminine flow has been incrementally shifting the balance over the last century. And I do believe that the divine feminine has um, like came in uh, our helping us raise our vibration and work with the divine feminine. Okay. To have an optimal human experience, we must embody a balance of masculine and feminine energies. We can daydream in receptive fluidity and then action our ideas into reality. We can be soft, nurturing, and also firm and direct as needed. We can be determined, compassionate, grateful, vulnerable, visionary, and strong. There can be a focus and free flow. We may not draw on these energies simultaneously, but when we access both equally, we can be truly powerful, centered beings. When we bridge the duality within ourselves, we can seed more balance in our outer world. The divinatory meaning... This card invites you to look at masculine and feminine energy from a more balanced perspective. 
is the situation at hand on the more masculine side of the spectrum? Can it be tempered with feminine energy? Vice versa, would the addition of the masculine energy bring balance? What needs to happen to form a more holistic and equalized foundation? Do you normally hold a position of one extreme? How might you balance this so you can experience a more optimized state of being? To bring more masculine drive and focus to a situation, for instance, if you have some upcoming due dates and you need to get into action mode, focus on your goals, desires, and ambitions. If you want to engage more feminine energy for receptivity, trust, flow, and surrender, consider all the things you are grateful for already. Feel the warmth, gratitude, and comfort of knowing everything is divinely perfect just the way it is. Okay, that is with your love, pleasure, creativity and amusement needs some balance to uh, deal with this tricky fox energy uh, sneaky or strategicness with your emotions balance 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 with your emotions uh, with love creativity amusement and pleasure okay so let's move on to the sixth house virgo this is health wellness, daily routines, and boundaries. For cancers, how will this Mercury retrograde possibly affect their sixth house of health, wellness, daily routines, and boundaries? How will this Mercury retrograde possibly affect cancers health, wellness, daily routines and boundaries. Okay. Ace of cups and it says emotions. This is a self cup of love. So with your health, wellness, daily routines and boundaries, this Mercury retrograde may bring you to have or take on a self cup of love of a purity um, loving yourself um, with your health wellness daily routines and boundaries taking a self cup of love self love flowing and so that's good what can you do about this though let's see what can cancers do about this and this is good. This is great. What can cancers do about this? Wow. Okay. We've got emotional storm. And the Ace of Cups says emotions on it. This says emotional storm. Practice allowing this self cup of love. This too shall pass, could you let it go? Interesting. Let it flow. That self cup of love, can you let it flow? Interesting. Let it flow. Uh, let yourself have the self cup of love. Let your love for yourself flow with your health, wellness, daily routines and boundaries. Have healthy boundaries. Okay, so let's move on to the seventh house, Libra. And um, this is relationships, uh, marriage, romantic partners. How will this Mercury retrograde possibly affect Cancer's seventh house of relationships? Possible uh, marriage or romantic partners. You've got wheel of fortune. Wow. Okay. So this is with your relationships, marriage, romantic partners. The wheel of fortune is cycling through karmic lessons. You may have a uh, karmic relationships from past lives that, that you come into this life with that you're cycling through, okay? Learning from releasing past uh, karmic relationships if needed or growing new ones. 
Um, this is Fate and Destiny. Interesting. Oh my goodness. Okay, so what can you do about this? What can cancers do about this? With their relationships, their romantic partners, marriage, with this cycling through karmic lessons, karmic relationships, fate, destiny. Oh my gosh. Okay, you got two. Wow. Okay. You got the Holy Grail interesting because before that we got the ace of cups which looks like the holy grail and it says inner discovery so during these karmic cycles with your relationships you're like getting this discovery within it says finding sacredness and you are what you seek amazing everything you seek is within yourself okay and it says the other one says, Seraphim's Gateway, voice activation, maybe communicate with your relationships, angelic attunement, um, angel guidance, and divine support. Amazing. Yeah. And um, let me read you these. This is amazing, Cancer. Okay. Inner discovery, finding sacredness, you are what you seek. The Holy Grail has been a mystery for thousands of years. Many believe that it was a cup that Jesus drank from at the Last Supper or that was used to collect his blood at the crucifixion, while others believe that it was a person, possibly Mary Magdalene. It's also been described as a stone, a dish, and a cauldron. The energy of this card is strongly related to a physical space which is the Chalice Well in Glastonbury, Southwest England. Interesting. In Sacred Garden, where many go to connect with the great goddess and discover the mysteries within. As a gateway, the Holy Grail is the, the cup of our heart, which we can allow to be filled by source light so that we are overflowing with divine love. Amazing. The energy that we call into the Holy Grail is the feminine energy of source, the Shekinah, the fierce yet graceful light that inspires us to dance to the sacred rhythm of life. This gateway, therefore, encourages us to stop searching outside ourselves for truth and go within to realize that we've had everything we've been searching for the whole time. It's like inviting the divine in, but knowing that it was already there before we asked. Okay, the connection, it says... Place your hands on your heart space and say this simple prayer. Dear Source Light, thank you for filling the cup of my heart so I can so I am overflowing with your love. Your message says, You have been on a great quest, seeking, searching, discovering, but the further you've gone, the more your heart has called you back. You may still be looking for treasure. But you are now discovering that all roads lead back to you. The great source of creation holds up a shiny mirror in front of you and you see your reflection. You are the answer. You are the divine. You are creative. You are creating. The gateway of your divinity has opened in the, and the vessel of your being is flowing with infinite light. You have been searching for God and God is within. So go within. This is the key to heaven. Your cup is overflowing. Your gifts are being unlocked. Let the world share your treasure. That's beautiful. Now, Seraphim's Gateway. <laughs> okay. Voice activation, angelic attunement, divine support. The seraphim are the highest form of angelic beings who are said to radiate from the heart of source. They have been described in many different ways through the ages, but what is common is the idea that a brilliant light emanates from them. The word seraphim means burning ones, for in ancient times, light was associated with fire as this was the main source of light within homes. 
These beings of infinite light are essentially divine love that is taking on an angelic form in order to serve the universe. When they have appeared physically, they have been described as having six wings and they are known for their heavenly voices. In fact, miraculous planetary shifts are reported to take place when they sing. Amazing. In the heavenly realms, maybe you need to sing wherever you are. Okay. In the heavenly realms, they sing in constant praise of the Creator. Other angelic presences report to them with regard to their spiritual duty. As it were, it doesn't operate in such a linear way, but this is the best way for us to understand the process. If you have ever woken up hearing your name being sung, I have before. Have you? Cancer, if you've had this happen, please let me know. Okay? Um... The seraphim has visited, have visited you. When they come to you, know that you are blessed to be in the presence of angelic beings that emanate directly from the heart of source. Their voices will help awaken the angelic presence you hold within so that you can support the expansion of the world. And it says, connect. Visualize yourself immersed in golden light. Then say, thank you, mighty seraphim, for blessing me with your loving presence and for supporting me in awakening the angelic qualities I have within. Let's see. And your message says. <laughs> okay. You are blessed to receive the light of the seraphim. You know that these beings of infinite light are singing your name in the heavens to unlock the power of your own voice. Angelic support surrounds you at this time. Know that you are safe for you are being held by the presence of love. The seraphim are witnessing the glory of your being and activating your angelic qualities. You care deeply about the welfare of the planet and all her beings. In fact, you are hoping to make a difference in the world. And the reason for this is you are carrying angelic light. Let it shine on the world around you. Oh, that's amazing. Wow, Cancer. Okay. I need to just probably sit on my knees for a minute so now we are going to um the eighth house and this is scorpio this is endings and beginnings um this is um completion restarting deaths and rebirths okay so let's do Let's do this one. Okay. How will this Mercury retrograde possibly affect Cancer's eighth house, please? How will this Mercury retrograde possibly affect Cancer's eighth house of endings and beginnings, deaths and rebirths? Thank you. Knight of Swords. Okay. Okay. So this is Aquarius, Gemini, Libra energy. Um, air is words and um, communication. Um, so Knight of Swords. This is going to make you... This Mercury Retrograde is going to make you feel... Um, maybe a little reckless or just quick action, taking quick action, um, with ending things to begin new things, like maybe job changes or moving and stuff like that. So it may make you feel a bit rash. Okay. Now let's see what you can do about that. What can cancer do about this uh, feeling rash to end things and begin new things? What can they do during this Mercury retrograde? Too many. What can they do, please, for cancer? <laughs> okay, we got one. We've got Orca. Song lines, number 30, 
can be a three. Communication, transportation, journeys. Interesting. Orca song lines. Wow. See, before that, it was about your voice and singing. And now, <laughs> it's this Orca song lines. Let's find that. Oh, almost there. Okay. Orca song lines. They sing, they say. Okay. Um, you are walking in the bloodlines of your ancestors. Um, but you are an individual who makes your own destiny. Seek better communication with family. Very interesting. Nourish yourself and exercise extreme self-care. Share your skills with others. Very interesting. Sorry, guys. I'm just uncomfortable. I don't know what's going on. Okay. The magic says, Orca magic can be raised by singing your own song by the sea. It is a feminine magic that can be used to help heal breaches in family relationships. Orca magic is also one that asks for self-care and nourishment. Hmm, this may be connected to relationships. That you may feel rushed to end them or something during this Mercury retrograde. You are feeling weak in your physical body or mind, especially with issues of vitality or endurance. The power of the orca can be called upon as an ally. Wow. So sing your own song. This is your path. Um, watch communication. Be careful with it. Um, use loving words. And uh, during when you feel rash about these quick decisions, um, it may be connected with um, uh, communication and relationships, possibly. Okay, so now let's move on to the ninth house, Sagittarius. And um, let's get a tarot card. Um, this is spirituality, um, mental exploration, uh, mindset. It can be faith. How will this Mercury retrograde possibly affect Cancer's ninth house of spirituality, mental exploration, and mindset? Oh my gosh! You have the tower again, Cancer. That's crazy! Crumbling of faulty foundations with your mindset, mental exploration, and uh, spirituality. So crumbling of foundations. Big, big changes with this Mercury retrograde. So what can you do about it? Let's see, let's do this one. What can you do about it? What can cancers do about the crumbling of foundations um, in their spirituality, mental exploration, mindset, Forge, don't follow. Forge, do not follow other people's spirituality, mindset, mental exploration. Uh, learn what you want to learn. Um, build your own spirituality, however you want to. Pave a new path. Be the leader you wish you had. That's amazing. <clears throat> like a lot of religions, don't follow... <sighs> Sorry, but that's my belief. I feel like do your own thing. Pave your own path. Okay? Pave a new path. Be the leader you wish you had. If you wait until the path is perfectly paved, you won't be forging your own path. And you'll likely not even take the first step. Don't let a small detail like being unable to find someone to show you the way be the reason you don't step forward and lead. Let it be the reason that you do. The most courageous and needed leaders are the ones who don't wait for permission or until the morning they wake up feeling ready. They take a deep breath, put one foot in front of the other, and then figure it out as they go. They don't wait for someone to lead them. They lead themselves. This is a card for leaders. You're here to pave a path that hasn't been walked before. To go first and lead the way for others who are calling you in. If you feel mis- uh, re represented in the media step forward for all those who also feel misrepresented if no one's speaking out on the topics you feel passionate about 
Share your unique voice. There's no one on earth who comes close to possessing your unique combination of skills, gifts, and life experience. Don't look to those who have come before you to work out your path. Leaders must forge their own. Do it for your daughter. Oh my gosh. Wow. Do it for your daughter. Do it for the younger you. Do it for the leaders who fall who will follow. When you go first, you make it easier for others to follow your lead. Forge, don't follow. The Starseed Soul Inquiry says, how are you being called to forge rather than follow? How can you be the leader you wish you had? That's incredible. Oh my goodness. Crumbling and faulty foundations. There's going to be big, big changes during this Mercury retrograde. Pave your own path with your spirituality, faith, mental exploration, and your mindset. This is amazing. Okay, Cancer. Let's move on to the 10th house of Capricorn. And this is career public image, social status. So, <clears throat> for cancers, how will this Mercury retrograde possibly affect their 10th house of career, public image, and social status? How will this possibly affect their 10th house, please, for cancer? Okay, hey. the lovers, wow. And that can just be uh, two energies. Um, it can be a relationship. Um, it is duality mixing two energies well. And so that's really good. Career, public image, and social status. I think this is gonna be really good to balance and mix uh, these two energies well together, mixing energies well, and duality. Wow. It's going to make you um, balance, mix energies well, um, have this duality, um, a balanced force. Okay, so that's good. I mean, what can you do about it? Let's see. What can you do about this? <laughs> My goodness. What can cancers do about this? With their career, public image, and social status. What can they do about this? Okay. Now, let's see what you got. Synchronicity. Uh, watch for the synchronicities, numbers, um, signs. It says on divine time, divine timing, flow state, let things flow, meaningful coincidences. All right. Then you've got take a step, get into action, co-creation with spirit, path will appear. We just did that pave a new path card. This is so synchronistic, <laughs> synchronicity. On divine time, flow state, meaningful coincidences. Let things flow. This whole reading has been so synchronistic. Take a step, get into action, co-create with spirit, path will appear. Amazing. This is for your career, public image, social status. And then the mixing of two energies really well. Duality. That's amazing. So now <clears throat> we're going to go to the 11th house, Aquarius. This is your hopes, wishes, friends, and community. Okay, for cancers, how will this Mercury retrograde possibly affect uh, their 11th house of hopes, Wishes, friends, and community, please. How will this possibly affect their 11th house of hopes, wishes, friends, and community? Ooh, 
Okay, oh, we've got Eight of Pentacles, and it says Opportunities. And this is like the working card. It can be a job um, or creating something or mastering something. So it's going to bring in opportunities with your hopes and wishes, friends and community. Possible job opportunities. Very interesting. Um, or just opportunities of making new wishes and hopes, making new friends um, in community. Wow, Cancer, you'll have to let me know. Let's see what you can do about this. Pretty interesting. Um, not that one. This one. Very cool. You will have to let me know, Cancer. I'm very curious. Okay, so what can Cancers do about this? These new opportunities in their hopes, wishes, friends, and community. What can they do about this? Oh my gosh, those like flew out and there's like three of them. Oh my goodness. Okay, so the first one says Earth Star Chakra Initiation Number One. This is your self image, personality, um, what you project to others. It's number one, that's what it means. Earth Star Chakra Initiation, and that's like opportunities. And then now you have Crystal Keys, number 22, adds up to a four, which is structure stability. That's so good. And then Lumen Essence. Number 35 adds up to eight, which is endings and beginnings, new opportunities. These go so amazingly well together. So let's read the Earth Star Chakra for you. All right. Okay, so this says initiation, oneness, collective consciousness, anchoring transmissions from the higher realms, sacred earth knowledge, integration of the divine, working with grid lines amazing you are standing at a gateway into the unknown with trust in your heart ancient remembering in your soul and inner illumination to light the way you have access to the seat of creation the spark of existence and the codes that hold the blueprints of who and what you are that's so interesting this all reminds me of like a job a career or something new opportunities you have oh sorry let's see where we are this place is clear and grounded despite moving through multi-dimensional realms and able to bridge worlds while functioning in physical reality. The higher you reach for the divine in the realms of spirit, the more important it is to anchor deeply to the earth. How to restore, explore clearing meditations, self energy work and put intention into the meaningful parts of your life. Find ways to balance your life. Be aware of the times of the day that are more conducive to different states of consciousness, such as flow, meditation, and productivity. It says themes, integration of spirit and the eternal self, how you balance spiritual and physical reality. It says healing position at the feet, 30 centimeters below the feet, but placing the card at the feet is fine. Interesting. The color wash says earth brown. I just love that card so much. Okay, I gotta move this crystal ball. Okay, now let's do crystal keys number 22. Uh, adds up to four, which is structure stability. Oh, that's not it. Mm -hmm. okay all right and this card always reminds me of crystal medicine i'll always link her uh, channel in the description below hidden wisdom codes potent information lemurian seed crystals seeing your triggers as a gift awareness of drama creating patterns healing the earth by looking at your inner environment healing through awareness lemurian quartz Crystals are special pieces of clear quartz with indented ridges running across them. They are known as seed crystals because they are said to have been found individually, buried in sand and earth rather than attached to a larger crystal the way most crystals are. 
Aware of their oncoming destruction, the Lemurians imbued information on about how to avoid a similar catastrophe on crystals and buried them. The ridges on the crystals are believed to be Lemurian inscriptions. These crystals are reappearing now as this knowledge is again relevant. This card is about deciphering wisdom codes. We may wonder how to access information regarding our spiritual growth as we navigate our everyday reality. This wisdom comes through inner paradoxes. When we are truly present, odd, in creative flow, or a state of surrender, it may come as riddles and in the most unlikely places. Zen Buddhism taps into this using koans, paradoxical statements the mind cannot fathom to bypass traditional understanding and allow spiritual epiphany and a deeper knowledge of the soul to surface. Key wisdom codes can come to us when we are triggered. They are accessible in those moments when everything becomes more emotional, dramatic, or painful than it needs to be. Here, when light shines on our shadow, we are graced with significant insight into places we can grow and evolve from. Although it might take courage and a healthy dose of self-awareness to embrace the wisdom of those moments, it's amazing how much energy, freedom, and expansion comes as a result of deciphering these bubbles of information tailored especially for us. Sometimes insight is so perfectly constructed within a scenario that it gets right into our most tender spots for the perfect healing. These are potent codes as all personal and power struggles and ego problems affect the bigger picture of how the world operates. Our shadows are unresolved wisdom codes. Avoidance makes them spiral out to aid in the construction of the world we don't actually want, both individually and collectively. When we see this information as a gift that it is, we can cultivate presence and begin to see between the lines of our inner workings. The world needs as much light as possible, so we do not have a repeat, repeat of what happened in Lemuria. Let's allow ourselves to see our dark, our, sorry, our shadows as an opportunity to bring more light into our being and heal the world from these dark foundations. Wow. Okay, so... Uh, one more for that. This is the divinatory meaning. Be inspired to find the wisdom hidden in those times when you feel triggered. There is so much information within our raw and intense reactions that when you choose to be present with what is coming up and peel back the layers, great spiritual insight will unveil itself in a way tailored just for you. If we could all learn to see our triggers in the bigger picture, so much confrontation and upset would be lessened. Power struggles and fear would diminish and we would see greater compassion across the planet perspective and misunderstanding would shift and the way people want to be lo loved would be experienced without distortion these are the seeds for peace on earth wow um maybe cancers you probably um would benefit by checking out crystal medicine she's got um amazing high vibrational videos and it just it's so cleansing and clearing and Honestly, anybody could use them. Uh, they're amazing. She's amazing. Okay, so now we've got the Lumen Essence, number 35. Adds up to eight. This is the changes, um, endings, and beginnings. Self-love, the light that radiates from our hearts. Light shining in the darkness. Heart-centered living, removing your heart armor. Accepting your shadows as the flip side of your strengths, a vulnerable, wide open heart, authentic, heartfelt, heartfelt needs. <laughs> when we choose to journey through life from our hearts, it illuminates the darkness. All illusion drops away and we see what is real. What does self-love look like for you? Self-love is often talked about, but we don't always consider its deeper implications. One of the keys for bringing heaven to earth is the re realization of our opt optimal reality. To create a new earth not dissimilar to the Lemurian utopia, we navigate our illuminate or illuminate our journey through our hearts. When our core foundations are integrity and kindness, our choices are ethical and our souls radiate warmth. Hold compassionate space for others and inspire others to carry it forward. Or unfortunately, as we travel through life, we often armor ourselves to protect our hearts. We fear them to be delicate and vulnerable, but this is a contrary to the incredible power of having a fully open heart. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sadly, we can toss parts of ourselves in the trash because we cannot see how they serve us, or they may feel too ugly or painful. 
Loving yourself is about accepting all of yourself, including the parts you may consider less desirable. Self-love is unconditional. As we make the journey to wholeness, we see that the parts we have severed from ourselves are counterparts to our greatest, I almost dropped the book, strengths. We also realize the actions we thought benefited others when we went out of our way to please, oh, fall short or fall away. In their place, we can allow authentic gifts to unfurl and bring luminosity to shared endeavors and environments. Consider how you relate to your world when you come to it from a happy place of fullness. Doing things because you want to. Sometimes we feel must give away our happiness to show we care for others. Oh, that is so true. And doing things because you want to. Sometimes we feel we must give our way. Oh, I just read that. Our happiness show we care for others. But when we live our joy, it affects others. Acting from an uninspired obligation and the cloud it brings can hold no light to that joy. Remember, your internal world reflects your outer reality. If you are met by less than ideal dynamics, they may hold a clue to your unloved parts. Accepting our less desirable aspects doesn't make the behaviors that may arise from them okay accepting your whole self means being okay with the foundations that have created these insecurities and bringing them back into balance a technique for painting light involves balancing the surroundings within a darker color the darker the ju juxtaposition huh and okay sorry juxtaposition hmm the brighter the light appears. This is a great analogy analogy for accepting all aspects of our deeper selves. Be real with your shadows so you can let more light in and shine brighter. Love is the most potent and healing tool that we have, and the more we feel, the more we create. It's contagious too. The more we live from our hearts, the more we find it in our lives. So how do we kickstart the, this, whole, whole, this wholeness of being? Be present and authentic with your heartfelt needs. Have an awareness and a softening toward your unloved parts. It may seem easier said than done, but start seeing things from a gentler, more compassionate place, away from judgment. In the bigger picture, we are all doing the best we can within our circumstances. Often the things that keep us out of our hearts, almost said, are much simpler to release than we realize. Finding what makes us happy and surrounding ourselves with those who we really see who really see us and encourage us to go a long way. Be aware of the parts of yourself that you find easy to love and set goals for healing things that require extra care and attention. Honor the fantastic vessel your body is. Look at what you are good at and grow your self-appreciation from this place. Wonder at the challenges you have moved through. Dream big, but also be real about what is achievable. Do not compare yourself to others, as we all have our different struggles and strengths. Think about all you are grateful for. Acts of kindness are another way to expand that heartfelt good, feel good vibe. The divinatory meaning. Consider the parts of yourself you may not be accepting. You may be experiencing an inner dissonance due to what you are trying to push away. This card is about self-love. That is the deep, compassionate, unconditional love of self. That brings you into wholeness. Lumen essence means the essence of light. There is nothing that makes us shine more than a heart that is full of love. You can shine through the shadows most gracefully when there is no fear within. Accept your shadows so that so they can more easily resolve. Allow more light and love inside and out of your world. Wow! Oh my gosh! So that was all with your career. Um. Oh my gosh. No, 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 sorry. Um, hopes, wishes, friends, and community. <laughs> sorry about that. Interesting. Hopes, wishes, friends, and community. Last but not least, <laughs> um, the 12th house. Um, Pisces. This is your self undoing. Um, unknowns, unseen dreams. It can be secrets. So, okay, let's see how this Mercury retrograde may affect your 12th house of unknowns, unseens, self undoings, dreams. How, oh, that was quick. How will this Mercury retrograde possibly affect the 12th house for Cancer? King of Wands. This is taking action. Taking action. Oh my gosh. Oh. 
Okay, taking action um, always wins. Um, always wins. <laughs> May have an ego, but he always wins and he takes action. This is the King of Wands. And this is going to make you probably want to take action. Um, take the power of taking action with your dreams unknowns, unseens, self undoings. Interesting. Okay, so let's see what you can do about it. And if we can get a little bit more information. Um, yeah, that's very interesting. Okay. What else do you have for cancer about this feeling the need to take action and win with their self undoings, their dreams, this, the unknowns and unseens for cancer. What else do you have? What can they do about this? Serious star blessings. It says, yes, proceed, be seen and push through. Take the action. Take the action for these dreams, the self undoing, this uh, secrets, emotions, um, unknowns. Let's read this for you. Sirius star blessings. Sirius is the brightest star in the sky and was the utmost importance to the ancient Egyptians. In fact, our current near new year was celebrated as the coming of the Sop Det, the goddess queen of Sirius. As during the last week of December, Sirius can be found high in the sky between midnight and dawn. The Sirius star system is the home of a race of humanoid beings who most likely live in a dimension higher than our own. It's believed that these beings can be contacted through spiritual practice. Tuning into them can enable us to receive high frequency spiritual downloads. This card draws a bright light of Sirius and the support of Syrian star beings into our world. When it comes to us, it helps us find light in moments of darkness and uncertainty. And to continue on, if you feel strongly connected to Sirius, its star beings, it's likely that you're connected to them on a spiritual level. And if you take time to locate the star in the sky, you might even have a sense of coming home. How to connect? Find an image of Sirius online or look, at the, look for the star in the sky. Imagine a great beam of light coming down from it and washing over your being. Know that the electric blue frequency will be supporting you as you move forward. Now your message says, the message that comes with this gateway is a giant yes. It brings the energy of wishing on a star and seeing what wish coming true. This is a time for you to move forward within any project or ideas that you have felt called to carry out. There is an energy, oh, it's upside down. <clears throat> there is an energy of positivity, abundance, and excitement surrounding you at this time. Whatever dreams, you've been revisiting recently aren't dreams ooh, but premonitions know what that whatever you're connecting with on the inside is soon to be something you'll be experiencing in the physical so think about what you desire instead of what you fear see yourself celebrating as your wildest dreams have come true as you do so you'll be creating the perfect energy for them to manifest in your world oh my gosh that's amazing so now we're going to end this cancer with a last blessing card. Um, I hope this resonates. Uh, this was quite incredible. A lot of synchronicity. Um, and you'll have to let me know. Please let me know if you want to. Okay, what last blessing do you have for cancers? For this Mercury retrograde in these times and how it will affect them. And thank you so much for all of the advice for them what they can do. What other last blessings do you have? All right. Archangel Uriel. Archangel Uriel works on the ruby ray, which is made up of purple and gold. It is the ray of wisdom and spirituality. You are blessed to attract this angel card, for he will bring you serenity, love, tranquility, and peace. 
you in your turn are invited to spread these beautiful qualities to others. Connecting with Archangel Uriel will enable you to aspire to oneness with all humanity. This is a high state of grace which will bring you freedom and joy. Visualize yourself in a purple and golden cloak and invoke Archangel Uriel's help to raise your consciousness. I think you need to visit Crystal's channel. Affirmation, I am one with everyone in peace and serenity. Like I said, I will list her channel in the description below. I am I really hope you enjoyed this, um, Cancers. Uh, yeah, please like, comment, subscribe. Um, comment, please. Um, <laughs> I thank you so much for being here. I do pray that this did resonate with you. And let me know if you want to. Thank you so much. And I'll see you again next time. Have a great day and a great Mercury retrograde. Grow, grow, grow.